good morning. Let's go ahead and stand and go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do come before you this morning, and Lord, we do worship you and adore you. God, I pray for uh, the service today. We pray that you'd be glorified. Lord, I do pray for those who are traveling, for those who are sick, those who can't be here today. We just pray you minister to them. God, I pray for those who join by internet. I pray that you would minister to them as well. And, uh, Father, I pray that everything that's done and said in this place would bring glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We waited for this day. We're gathered in your name. We're calling out to you. Glory like a fire, awaken in desire. We'll burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing.
gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me it's your Thank you, Jesus, for your love. I'm so thankful, Lord, that it doesn't give up, that it doesn't run out, Lord. Lord, I know that I'm so thankful for your grace, God, your love and your grace and your mercy, because where would we be without that amazing grace? And I'm so thankful for you, Jesus. Who is this King of glory? Beautiful and matchless one. Who is this king so holy? Every knee will bow at his throne. Jesus the Lamb of God. Oh 
You're the king that gave us. You're the king that gave us. Life with every drop of your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, the the throne right now, the angels and the seraphim and the, the, the cherub, they're all, they're all sitting around your throne and they're singing holy, holy, holy but Lord here on earth we're singing the same song holy, holy, holy and worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive all honor, all praise, all glory forever and ever thank you Jesus hallelujah praise in this house. Lord, you are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. He alone is worthy. Amen. He alone is worthy. You know, we can make a lot of things gods in our lives. We can even make ourselves the center of the universe. But he alone is worthy. Amen. He alone is worthy, church. Amen. If you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you ought to be praising him right now. He alone is worthy. Hallelujah. He alone. He alone. He alone. He alone is worthy of our praise and our worship. He alone. Jesus alone is worthy of all our praise. Amen. Hallelujah. All of our praise, all of our worship, all the glory goes to him. Amen? Hallelujah. Sing that chorus, if you will, one more time. Alone is worth Just continue to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. You alone, seated on the throne of heaven, glorified, glorified. You alone. You alone, worthy of our praise forever. You alone, seated on the throne of heaven, 
praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy, isn't he? He alone is worthy. Praise God. He is still a miracle working God. He still performs miracles. I'm believing for healing for my sister as she came forth this morning. I believe God's touching her back right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you're here in your need of a healing touch or a miraculous touch, the miracle worker is in the place and he's able to do miracles in your life. You just have to have faith, believe. You may need a miracle maybe in your marriage, but the Lord, he's, he, he can be right in the center of the marriage. He wants to be right in the center of your marriage. He wants to be right in the center of your home. You may be having home troubles. You may be having problems with kids or, or whatever it is, but he is a miracle-working God. Amen. Amen. He's a miracle-working God. There's nothing impossible with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just stand upon his promises today. We stand upon the promises of God. Do you stand on his promises today? Do you believe what thus saith the Lord? Do you believe the holy word of God? Do you believe it to be true for your life today? I believe it's true. 
shadow of a doubt that from Genesis 1, 1 to the end of the book of Revelations, every word of God is true. It's infallible. It's the infallible word of God. And what God said he'll do for us, he means he will do that for us. God's people that are sick today. God still brings deliverance to those that are captive. God still saves to the uttermost. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And he's worthy of all the praise and the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Lord Jesus. I think we can do a little bit better than that, church. I think we can do a little bit better. If your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life today, somebody ought to shout and give the glory to the Lord today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Will you just continue to worship him? He's right here. He's inhabiting the praises of his people right now. Just worship him. Just worship him. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your holy name, Jesus. We bless your holy name, Jesus. You're worthy. You alone. You alone. Sing that chorus, if you will, one more time. You alone are worthy of our praise forever, you alone. Are worthy of our praise forever, you alone. Seated on the throne of heaven, glorified, glorified. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. He is worthy. Amen. Amen. He's worthy. Praise God. What a wonderful spirit, presence of the Lord in this place today. You know, uh, came in tired. I'll just be honest with you. But you know what? I'm already feeling refreshed. <laughs> I already am feeling that touch from God, that anointing, and I praise him for it today. You know, that's one of the importance of being in the house of God is to come and get refreshed again, amen, to come and be revived again, to come and have an encounter with the Lord, amen. Praise God, praise God. What a privilege we have, and we should never abandon the privilege and the opportunity that we have to come and gather as the people of God, to come and to receive the word and to come and to worship the Lord, amen, amen. 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 Because when I come to the house of God, he fills me up. I get a refill, and I need a refill, and you need a refill, and none of us can go on empty for too long before we just, right, give up and give out and quit. But thanks be to God, we can come on the first day of the week like we're coming right now and start it out right and put him first above everything else and prioritize him and just come back and say thank you Lord for what you did for me last week <laughs> and I'm giving you praise for what you've done in my life and what you're doing on for me right now and I'm giving you faith and hope and believing for what you're going to do this week amen the Lord's good he's good he's good tell your neighbor there the Lord is good amen the Lord is good yes he is he is good he is very good. He's great and greatly to be praised, isn't he? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, you can be seated. We've got, uh, we're going to be receiving new church members this morning. And uh, it's always a wonderful time as we, uh, uh, as people step forward to uh, become a member of, of the local body of the Church of Adoration, Church of God. 
and so we're just thankful for that we, we're also going to be receiving some new members next month some could not be here today for various reasons but we're going to be receiving new members again next month and so but we're going to we're going to take in some members right now so those that have attended the class and are uh, whether you attended it in a time past and you want to make that step forward to join the church will you come this morning and we want to receive you today as members of the church amen amen praise God praise God now being a member and you've heard me say this before some of you have and some of you have not being a member of the body of this church local church right here does not save you doesn't save you but it can help you stay saved do you know that it can help you stay in a relationship with Christ because being a part of the church we're accountable to one another and we're 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 in this together and so we're not uh, we're not over here on the fringes trying to live it on our own but we have a body that we're a part of and when we when we make that choice and we make that commitment to a church body we're saying hey I'm committed to this to you I'm committed not only to Jesus Christ the body of, of, of his the whole church the universal church but this local part of the church and to be a part of it and to and to be a ministry part of it and so Brandon and 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 uh, Kari are going to be joining today and they've already been a very vital part of what we're doing here and uh, we're just so thankful for this step forward as they're even making a deeper commitment with the church today and so um, we do have expectations I've shared that with them I share it with all the people when we do a membership class and of what we would expect of them and also what they should expect of us as a church because it's not just one-sided isn't it it's not just a matter of you give you give you give it's a matter of also receiving and so we're here and it's mutually beneficial amen and so as a member uh, the expectations for you two and all of us is that you will support and further the mission of Adoration Church of God that you will pray for your church and fellow members regularly that you'll be present in worship and other church events on a regular basis and support your church with your spiritual and financial gifts and find an area of ministry through which you can serve Christ and others and as a church family we have this uh, expectation that you can have of us and that's to provide opportunities for you to live out your faith in service to others to provide faith building opportunities for you to grow as a Christian to provide opportunities for you to develop deep and lasting friendships and community with others to provide opportunities for lifelong learning as you deepen your understanding of the Bible and the Christian faith and to be good stewards of your financial contributions to your church amen amen so we are going to uh, I'm going to ask them a few questions here as we as we take them in as new members and then I'll ask the congregation to stand and we're going to have a word of prayer over them as they uh, make this commitment so this covenant of membership you realize in presenting yourself for membership that you are assuming a solemn obligation and it is expected that you always be true to your promise and fulfill faithfully fulfill and discharge your obligation as a loyal member do you publicly confess and testify that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior in the full pardon of your sins praise the Lord do you publicly uh, are you willing to walk in the light of the scriptures as it shines upon your path are you willing to abide by and subscribe to the discipline of the Church of God as outlined by the scripture and set forth in the minutes of the General Assembly are you willing to support the church with your attendance and temporal means to the best of your ability as the Lord prospers you do you agree to be subject to the counsel and admonition of those who are over you in the Lord if there be any member who has a legal objection to any of these becoming members of the church the objector may now so state I don't hear anything all right I don't want to hear anything later either it was your choice so by the authority vested in me as an ordained bishop of the Church of God and pastor of Adoration Church of God we welcome you I give you the right hand of fellowship and we welcome you guys and we love you <laughs> and God bless you all and just let it let want you to know we're here for you and we also believe God's got great things in store for you here and he's already doing a great work and he's just begun something and so we're just excited about what's yet to happen amen amen what he's done where you've come from 
and where you're going. Amen. Amen. Will you stand and stretch your arm this way? We're going to have a prayer of blessing over them. We'll have time afterwards for you to come and greet them and, 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 and talk to them personally as, as new members. And, and, uh, but let's take this time and just stretch your hand this way, and uh, we're going to pray for them. Father, I thank you for Brandon and Kari. Lord, and little uh, uh, Carson. God, I pray for this family. God, I pray that you'd bless them. Lord, as they are making this step, just a step of faith and commitment, step of discipleship, a step of saying, I want to do more. I want to be more involved. I'm giving my commitment to the church here. I will be available. I will serve with you. I will help with you. I'll support you. I'll pray for you. I'll contribute to whatever the mission and the vision of the church is, Lord. Thank you, God, for that heart that they have. Lord, bless them and enable them by your spirit, God, and anoint them for the work that you have for them to do, Lord. God, as they've already begun a good work, Lord, we pray that you just make it even greater. And Lord, let many souls come into the kingdom and be discipled through these two. Bless them and bless their families, God. Lord, use them in a powerful way, God, for we know that you have, you have begun a good work. I just keep th hearing that. I've begun a good work in them and you're faithful and you will complete it God and we thank you Lord for that bless them and anoint them God for your calling and your purpose as they have now joined the adoration church of God Lord we give you the praise and glory for it all and we join together as one and accept them today in Jesus name amen 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 praise God God bless you guys love you all love you. <laughs> praise God praise God Praise God. If anybody else is interested in joining the church and you've not attended the membership class, we'll be having one here in the real near future in, in, in October that we will have to uh, uh, give you more information about the church and how that you can be a member and what the expectations and what the teachings are and et cetera so that you can truly understand what you are doing. So this week, I want to make a few announcements here. There's going to be a sub sale that will be going on Thursday and orders need to be in and everybody if you can help participate in this some way if you can go and get orders and take orders it's it's money that's being raised I tell you uh, I don't know that it's been designated as specifically what it's going for um, but I have something in mind um, that I think will be well there are a couple things as far as the building project goes one is looking at paving and doing some pavement up in the front part out here, which is going to cost around $8,000 to put a base level of pavement in the gravel area over here, not paving everything else, but just putting that one place right there, and I think we could maybe go ahead and, and take care of that. The other is we're changing some lighting things and doing some lights here, and I met with the light people here um, Thursday to do some things with the lighting. And, and to, to continue to do, make the progress that we need to make here in the, in the church building itself. It's part of our vision is to continue to make improvements and to improve in, in, in the church here. Um, uh, so that is, you know, they could help go toward that. I think it would be fine for that to happen. And, and uh, uh, so if you would like to help participate in that or you would like to just give toward the building fund to help that happen. Um, I think we'll get maybe about 14 spaces that would be there and then we would look at resurfacing or not resurfacing but sealing the current pavement over there and restriping it and and maybe doing some landscaping out front and try to finish off the outside part of what we've been doing at least at this phase I've gotten two quotes on paving all of it one was 75,000 the other was 50,000 the one that's 50,000 is the one that can do the part up here in the front that costs about 8,000 or so so it's an expensive thing to do, uh, and uh, but I think that that would be something that could be helpful from from the outside appearance of the church because this is the house of God and we want it to be beautiful, and uh, we want to take care of it to the best that we can. So that will be going on this week, and order forms need to be on, in on this evening of the 17th, and you can see Melissa uh, after service about this. Also on Saturday evening for the ladies there will be a movie here and a ladies night out at six o'clock uh, watching the movie breakthrough and bringing a finger food a time of fellowship with one another and next Sunday morning on 
September the 22nd. Our youth are going to be leading in worship, and we will have uh, a Haitian missions fundraiser luncheon immediately after service for the children's vi village of Doug, which is in Haiti. And it's uh, adults are $10, children $7. Linda Sylvie is going to be out in the connection area out here right after church, and you can sign up so that we can get a head count of how many people will be participating. I think it's a Haitian-style meal, so it'll have chicken and I don't know what else. But, uh, but uh, if you will, to try to help support this missionary work. Uh, this is Beth Dalton's niece, and she'll be here next weekend, um, and we'll be sharing during that lunchtime about the missionary work that's going on there. This past week, last Last Sunday, our missionary that was here, we received a special offering, and we were able to give to him $2,000 this past week for the work, yeah, praise the Lord, for the work that he's doing, and, uh, and uh, we want to continue to pray for him and, and, uh, and, and just remember him in prayer. We also gave this week $250 for the Bahamas Relief Fund in the Bahamas where the uh, uh, hurricane struck and, and hit there. And so all of this comes from your giving. You know, it's just a matter of when you give, when you make a contribution to the church, we want to help make sure it goes out to further the, the mission work of what the Lord is doing, not just here, but outside of here. Amen? We uh, helped someone just recently, a single mother that needed food. She was getting, uh, she was like in between a time of, of having really nothing, a few checks uh, or some money that was coming in, but no food stamps or anything like that. We've helped them before with their electric bill, but uh, we were able to help provide some food for her and her two children, uh, or three children. One of them is autistic, and, and uh, that, that, that is something that we ought to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, give the Lord praise for that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, if you will turn in your Bibles today to Matthew chapter 28, as we've been looking at mission critical, uh, verses 18 through 20 of the Great Commission, and we will be wrapping the, the sermon series up next week, next Sunday, but, uh, but that doesn't end the mission, does it? The mission has to continue until our last breath here, until we leave this life. But, uh, but we just have to see how critical the mission is. Because I think we've got to remember, we've got to be reminded sometimes and have maybe a jolt of, of memory to remember, what, what am I here for? What, what does the Lord really want me to do? And, and I think that this will help us to revive those things that need to be revived inside of us. We can get so busy with stuff and work and family and kids and all that's wonderful, and we end up putting God on the back burner. And the work that the Lord wants us to do kind of over here to the side because we're so busy with everything else. We need to put God back on the front burner. Amen? We need to put his work as the priorities in our lives. And all the other things will work out. Amen? Amen. Stand with me, if you will. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. We welcome all of you today, our guests. We welcome you and also those that are watching by Internet today, Facebook, live stream. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, God, for your love for us. As we sang that song, your love never fails. It never gives up. Never runs out on us. It's always, you're, you're just a, an endless source of love. You are love. And, and your love covers a multitude of sins. Your love sees us through the most difficult times. Your love accepts us just as we are. Your love is, is unlike any other kind of love. And we thank you, God, for that love that you have for us. And Lord, help us to have that love inside of us to go out to the missions field that's around us. Lord, that we would fulfill the Great Commission and that we would consider it more and more critical, especially in the time that we're living, to be able and to go do the things that we need to do to reach the lost before the return of Jesus Christ. Lord, the commission is about finished. I believe that. 
I believe that. I believe the work is about done. I believe the church age is about to wrap up. And Lord, I believe that as the signs of the time show us, according to your scriptures, that we're living in the midnight hour. And we need to be urgent. We need to be moving forward. We need to be fully engaged. And we need to be pressing forward in doing everything we can to reach this lost generation that we live in. Lord, help us. We need your help because we can't do it alone. We need your anointing, and we need the church to bind together. Lord, for us to come together as one and unite together as one like never before. God, you bless where there's unity. You bless where there's a united purpose and a united mission, and that's what we're trying to do is get on the same page together. Lord, help us to get on the same page together as the church that we need to fulfill your great commission to us. And it needs to be critical that we do this, Lord. Help us stir our hearts, stir our soul, stir our spirit. God, stir our mind, everything that's in us. Stir us up today to realize what we really need to be doing. And Lord, as we look today at, at this part of, of the commission of teaching others the word of God, Lord, help us not to shirk from our responsibilities, but Lord, help us to be empowered and anointed to do this work. In the name of Jesus, I ask it, and we believe together. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You can be seated. Last uh, week, or, or we'll recap over the last few weeks as to what we've been looking at of Matthew 28, 18 through 20. As we saw the first, pass, uh, the first sermon that I spoke about was go. Go is an action word, and it means that we're to move forward and we're to take action. And that's part of the that's that's really the first part of the Great Commission is to go and and take action and get involved and get a be a part of this of what the Lord is saying. And and it's not an option, it's a commandment. Go. Go and do this. And then we looked at therefore. And when we looked at therefore, it's a conjunctive verb and it links the, the statement of what to do with the reason why. And the reason why is Jesus says, All power or all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. And when we realize hey the one that's in charge is telling us to do this therefore we better do it right we don't need to sit on the sidelines and say well it's not for me but it's for all of us and it's for all of us to get involved to do this work because the Lord has the authority and he has the power and he is, is the one that saved us and he is the one that's changed our lives and he owns our lives we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ so we're no longer our own, but we belong to him. And so we need to do what he says to do. If you love me, he says, keep my commandments. Then we're told, make disciples. We looked at making disciples and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We looked at how it's important and the need for us to go fishing and to reach out to those and catch the lost and bring them in. We can't do it in our own power, but we need Jesus to instruct us and guide us. And sometimes it's a difficult work, and sometimes we get frustrated. But if we'll go and we keep on doing the things that the Lord wants us to do and being that disciple and being a true follower of Jesus Christ, then those that are around us can eventually come in to the kingdom through us. And, and it's an individual matter wherever you are and the people you know that the Lord can use you to reach them. And then when we've reached them, as a fisherman, then we have to become a shepherd, and then we have to feed them, and we have to tend them. We have to feed the sheep, and we have to feed the lambs, and we have to watch over them and, and help them to grow in their faith. Then last week, I didn't speak last week. I did share a part of this great commission, but our brother uh, Vahid shared some things, and we looked at the importance of going out into all the nations, even nations that don't love us, nations that don't care about us, that want us dead. Jesus loves them, and we have to love them too. And so our great commission that he's called us to is not just a matter of reaching all the Americans or reaching everybody that loves the Americans, but it's to reach out to the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are people that are Hindu who don't like Christians. We're reaching out to the Hindus in India. There are people who are uh, Muslim that do not like Christians, and by the, the ministries that, uh, and the giving that we're doing, we're reaching out to those who are of the Islamic faith. There are people who are uh, uh, of different nationalities. There are people that are involved with, with uh, uh, spiritualism and, and occult and, 
uh, different things in, in uh, the Navajo Nation. It's good to see our sister Sandy, but there are people who are dealing with that in, in the southwestern part of the country, and, and we pray for them and we help to support them a, as we can. And so there are different things where we'll be helping it with Haiti and we'll be helping in the Caribbean area here. And so there's things that we must continue to do, and we can't just sit on it. We've got to go and do it, don't we? And we've got to be aggressive and we've got to make it a mission that is critical that we've got to do this. If we don't do it, I, I, we need to ask ourselves, if I don't do it, who will do it? That's why we've got to start thinking, if I don't reach this person, if I don't tell them about Jesus, if I don't do this, then who will do it? Oh, well, somebody else will. Maybe not. It may be your calling. It may be your purpose, it may be your responsibility to reach that co-worker that you work with, to reach that neighbor, to reach that child, that you're, that, to reach your spouse or whoever it may be, that family member or that friend or that complete stranger out there. It may be your responsibility and if you or I, and I make this individual when I say you or I, I make it me and I make it you as an indiv individual. It's our personal responsibility to do this. If we don't, or I don't, or you don't, who will? And that's what we've got to be thinking more about. God's placed us here. He hasn't taken us out of here yet. He will one of these days. But until then, he still has something he wants us to do. Amen? And so we need to be busy about doing that. So today we're looking at the, uh, at the part of the Great Commission as we're getting closer to the end of it that says teach teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you so we're looking at this passage today or this this excerpt of the Great Commission and we must realize that making disciples and multiplying as a church requires that we must know what to teach them to help them be become successful you can go and you don't know what to do you know you can go and like just run and well what do I do when I get there right you can go because somebody told you to go, and you can keep running, and you don't know what to do. You can go and make disciples, but how do I make a disciple? You can go and baptize and put them in water and baptize them and bring them out. Then what? Then what is teaching them? Then what is telling them what the Word of God says? Then what is, is us helping somebody else either to come into the faith and to grow or that are in the faith to grow to the point that they become mature in their faith and a mature follower of Jesus Christ and then they go and multiply that's what we're to do and in the book of John it starts out in verse 1 saying in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God today's sermon title is teach them the word of God teach them teach them what the word of God Jesus is, it's described of Jesus Jesus is the word the word that was made flesh the word that was in the beginning the word that was with God and the word that was God now there is a um, there is a cult that, that says it's a lowercase g and it's not an uppercase g that it's like any other God that's out there but no no Jesus is equal with the Father, God, and with the Holy Ghost, God. And he has his own identity and his personage. And he is the Word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us. And he came here and he died on a cross. And he, he gave his life for us. And this Bible here is a revelation of the Word of God. This right here from Genesis to the end of Revelations is about Jesus Christ. It's about God's love for us and the need for salvation. You start out in the book of Genesis, you're going to see where man fell. God created us, and then all of a sudden, man fell. He sinned against God. And ever since then, there's been some need for salvation. God provided atonement. He killed an animal. He, he, he took and re, uh, covered them up, and, and blood was shed, and he put a, a, a clothed uh, fur around them to cover up their nakedness because they were aware of it. And, and then later on, it required the blood of bulls and goats and, and sheep and all kinds of things that had to be done because sin has to be atoned. And without the blood, there's no atonement. But Jesus came to fulfill that by being the Lamb of God. And he came as a 
perfect, spotless Lamb of God who came in the form of man, still being God, but also being man. And he died on the cross for our sins so that we could be forgiven of our sins. And he died on the cross and was placed in a tomb, and three days later, he arose from the grave. Amen? Alive and well forevermore. Hallelujah, yes. Uh, and if you have faith in him and you believe in him as the son of God and you've asked him to forgive you of your sins, then you are now a child of God. And you're on your way to heaven. Hallelujah. Are you on your way to heaven? I pray that everybody in here and everybody that watches and views what we're doing is on their way to heaven or they change directions today because when you think about the mission the mission is exactly that it's reaching out to those who are now without Christ to where they now become with Christ and then as they are with Christ helping them to grow in their relationship with Christ to become mature in their faith so when we see and we talk about the word of God the word of God is the same as the son of God it's the same as Jesus Christ and it's perfect it's infallible and and it's a revelation for who Jesus is as the Redeemer as the atoning lamb of God as the perfect sacrifice as the deliverer as the Savior of the world as the one who died, buried, and was raised again for our salvation, as the one who is the head of the church of all the believers, as the one who is the giver of the Holy Spirit to believers, as the one who rules and reigns as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, as the one who is preparing an eternal place for us in heaven, and as the one who's going to appear in the clouds someday is going to take us to be with him throughout eternity. And judgment's coming. And judgment will come for those that, um, as there will be a judgment seat, the white throne judgment, and that will be those who have not become a believer. There's a judgment seat of Christ, the Bema seat of Christ, where Jesus is going to judge us as believers and reward us according to our works. And, but those who are without Christ, who never come to Christ, will be at the judgment seat of God and, and those will be cast out into eternal darkness into eternal separation from God and punishment in, in, and it will be for eternity and it's, it's a sad thing to think about it will be something that will be horrible for eternity how many has somebody that you know that does not know Jesus do you know what if, if we don't reach them if we don't reach them they're going to go to hell does anybody want that person that you raised your hand about up for to go to hell sometimes we're like well I'm going to make it to heaven and we may not say it but it's kind of a way that we act it doesn't matter who else goes as long as I make it but we have loved ones you have friends you have family members you have spouse or whoever it may be that is not ready to go and we need to be actively reaching out to them to help them to make it to heaven See, the Word of God is Jesus Christ. And we have the Word, which is the Bible, available to us to learn more about how to live like Jesus and to do all the things He tells us to do. The Word of God is authoritative. It is God speaking to us, just like Jesus when He said to, in the Great Commission, All authority has been given unto me. Go, therefore. That's authoritative. He has the authority to tell us, and the Word of God is from God. It's divinely inspired by God as he moved upon men of old and he spoke to them the word of God and they pinned it down and wrote out what God's message was for us 
In fact, in 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. All Scripture. All Scripture. I think it goes back to what he's telling us. Teaching to observe all things that I've commanded. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. That's for what what we believe in, the core doctrine, the core beliefs of what we believe in, what we teach, for reproof of correcting us and correction, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, how to live righteously, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So the Word of God is important, and we need the Word of God, and we need to study it. And we not only need to study it personally, but we need to teach it, and we need to put it in practice and be disciples of Jesus Christ, the Word of God. As disciples, we are followers of Jesus Christ. And as a follower, you, a person who follows or a disciple has, has a teacher, has someone that we're trying to uh, duplicate or replicate what they have done and teach us to do. And so they are our role model and our example and our master. And so Jesus is exactly that for us as a believer. He's our teacher. He is our example. He is the master. And, and he is the one that we have to follow. And we have to do what he says to do. And we have to live our lives according to what, the way that he lived his life. And so we know that he's ascended to heaven. He's not here right now in person, but he is with us. And he has left us something of the written word of God. So you have a Bible, and he's left us a letter here that gives us a revelation of who he is. And it tells us the things that we should do and we should not do. And it tells us the commandments of what he wants us to do. He wants us to love one another. He wants us to forgive one another. He wants us to give and help those that are in need. He wants us to bless and not curse. He wants us to do these. He wants us to live a holy life before him. He wants us to pray. He wants us to fulfill his calling that he has in our life. He wants us to unite. He wants us to do all kinds of things, and he commands us to do those things. But if you never read it, then we're gonna, not going to really know what to do, are we? But it's for us. And it's available to us. And we need to take it and we need to do something with it and read it and apply it to our lives. So he has left the written word of God to teach us all how to live like him. He's not only done that, but he's called and he's appointed people as pastors and some as teachers in the body of Christ. So he's, he places pastors, he places teachers in the body of Christ to teach and to pastor and to share the word of God to help us to grow in knowledge and understanding of what the scriptures tell us to do, to help us to, to have that in our lives. And thirdly, he has given us his Holy Spirit as the teacher to guide us into all truth. So he says when he comes, he will teach you, he will guide us into all truth. So Jesus isn't here in person, but he sent the Holy Spirit here. And the Holy Spirit, we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to be able to be effective, to be able, and we need his guidance, and we need him to teach us because sometimes as, as mortal people, we just don't get it. I mean, I understand. You know, when Jesus was with his disciples, he told his disciples things, and he told them over and over and over, and they still just didn't get it. Duh, right? Well, we're the same way. We're the same way. We hear it over and over and over. We hear the same things over and repeat it to us, and we still sometimes like, realize that until it happens and we see God move in a situation when again and again and again and again and again we've read it or we've been told it but finally we get it inside of us and so that's the importance that we've got to do we've got to get these things inside of us and the Holy Spirit and and pastors and teachers and the written Word of God shows us and teaches us and helps us to be able to live the life as a true believer of Christ so we're really without excuse. Amen? And we need to study the Word of God and know all that Jesus wants us to know about Him and how that we're to live like Him to be and to make disciples. So how do we do this? Well, one, we've got to read the Bible. We must read the Bible. Does everybody have a Bible? Anybody here not have a Bible? We'll give you one. Anybody not have one? If you don't have one, we'll give you one. So I saw no hands raised except mine, and that was just an example for you to raise your hand. I have a Bible. I have several Bibles. How many has a Bible? Okay, hands everywhere. All right. 
so we need to read the Bible, don't we? So we have Bibles, so we need to read Bibles. If we want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, and, we're, and if we're to teach others and to help make them disciples and to teach them the things that Jesus said to do, we need to read the instruction manual, right? We need to, receive, we need to read the Bible ourselves and see what it says to us so that we know and understand what it is. And you need to read the entire Bible. You need to start in, I mean, you need to, wherever you start, but you need to read the entire Bible at some point. So you can see the full revelation of what God is saying to us about Jesus Christ and his church and how that we fit into this. So you need to read the entire Bible. And, and, and especially if, you're, if you haven't started reading the entire Bible, read all the Gospels. If you haven't read the Gospels, read the Gospels because that's where red letters are. That's where red, Now, my Bible right here doesn't have red letters in it, but I've got some Bibles that have red letters in it. What red letters are is where Jesus is speaking. This is where Jesus is saying this, and he's specifically saying this, and they're quoting him in this. So I would encourage everybody, if you've never read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you start today. Go get your Bible that you have and start reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and look at the red letters there and see what Jesus is saying because that's what he's telling us to do. Repent is one thing he says. <laughs> Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, right? You know, he, uh, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. Right? So here are the things that he says, and so when you look through these, you're going to get really specific into what he's really telling us. And all the other ones are important, and we need to read all those. But the Gospels are really important in, in helping us to understand what we need to know, what Jesus is telling us to do, and really how to model and mimic his life because this is where he lived here on earth. Other places he lived in heaven, and he lives in heaven today. And so we need to read the Bible. The Bible teaches us about Jesus and all that we're supposed to do as disciples of Christ. In addition to our personal reading, we need to be taught also. So we need to be taught the scriptures as well. Because there are some things that we're going to have to have some guidance in from another believer that's called to this and is a more mature believer to be able to help understand things. So you need to be involved and you need a teacher. I need a teacher. And we need someone who has more knowledge about the scriptures, has experience, has, has a closer relationship with God through the years or whatever because of growing and becoming a stronger disciple and a, and a stronger follower of Christ and becoming more Christ-like to be a teacher. You know, Paul told them, follow me as I follow Christ. You know, if, if lead, I'm, follow, I'm, I'm giving an example for you, Paul was saying, but he was teaching them and he taught the churches, the churches in Asia Minor and the different places that he went and churches were established and he sent the epistles, the, the letters to the churches to teach them. So God used a teacher, a pastor, an apostle to go and teach, to equip the church for the things that they needed to be done. So we need to have, and, and some people will say, well, I don't need anybody to teach me, and I say that's wrong. And, and the reason why I say it's wrong is if we didn't need somebody to do it, God would not have ordained the role of a teacher or a pastor in the church. It's true. We need it. I need it. We need it. And, and, and we need that in our lives. And so we, we, uh, we, we need this. So we need to have a, a, uh, a teacher and personal reading. And we need to have, you know, a mature believer teaching a younger Christian the ways of the Lord. And that, and that could be through uh, listening to a pastor preach on Sundays like you're doing right now. It could be through a one-on-one -on -one meeting with, uh, or mentoring with a mature believer and, and talking with that person. The Bible tells us the older women to teach the younger women. Amen? It does. And so, younger women, you need to connect with an older woman and an older woman. Listen, if you're more mature in Christ, you need to be making the connections with these younger women. You are the one that's, you're the one that's mature. You need to go and reach out to a younger woman and, and, and help her to grow. And, 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 and men, 
you know, being a godly man, a spiritual leader in our homes, but not only in our homes, but in the church. Go grab you somebody that, and mentor them and work with them and teach them. Take them under your wing, so to speak. Paul took Timothy. Uh, I heard that. Elijah has that Elisha. And so there are different ones in the Bible where you take somebody and you bring them with you and you help them to grow. That's a discipleship. That's teaching others. It's mentoring. It can also be done through small groups studying the Bible together and living out the Christian life together. So that could be through a Sunday school class. It could be life groups throughout the week. It could be family devotions. But be, being involved with a small group of other believers and maybe somebody that's not a believer in the group but others that are believers in the group and they iron sharpens iron so your word is shared and somebody over here has this word and somebody over here has this and somebody can explain it from this perspective and somebody over here and we all grow in our relationship because we're growing together and it's important to be in a small group like that it's very important to be connected in a small group type setting of believers growing in their faith all of these are important and all of these are essential for our growth and I don't believe that you can take one out and really be effectively growing the way that the Lord wants you to grow. I think that we've got to have really a combination of all three things. You've got to have somebody that is a spiritual leader, a pastor, a teacher that's teaching us, right? You need to have someone that you have a close relationship with that is more mature, and you need to have a mentor there that you're working with. And then you need to be connected in a small group of believers and living out your faith together and growing in the Word of God together. And if, you miss any, if we're missing any of those things, we're missing out on something of discipleship. We really are. And what happens is we don't grow. So we, we stay at a place of, of, of being immature as a believer for a long time. We, we get fed and then... You know, we come to church and the pastor feeds us or a teacher feeds us and we go and then that's it. We go throughout the rest of the week. We don't read the Bible. We don't connect with the church. We don't get in a small group. We don't have a mentor that we work with, somebody that, 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 that will take time to talk with us about things. And we just kind of stay stagnant. We don't really grow anymore in the Lord and we're really not able to do the mission work because we're not mature in our faith. Fear gets in our way. Uh, um, uh, we're afraid because we haven't established the confidence and the boldness and we haven't been filled with this Holy Spirit and we don't have enough knowledge of the Word of God to be able to to be able to even share things I'm not saying that to be mean I'm just saying that that happens in our lives and and, and we need to be very careful that we don't shirk any of the responsibilities that we have as a believer to grow in our relationship with the Lord so uh, as, as, for example, here I am as a pastor teaching and sharing the Word of God to help us grow as a congregation. And so as a pastor, we feed spiritually. But this needs to have that accompaniment of, of the other uh, uh, believers studying together and having someone else teach. Because in those circumstances, those situations, you have time to ask questions. You have time to ask questions. And to be asked questions. And to to really probe and, and get deeper in the Word. You know, I, what, what I'm trying to do is give you an appetite. You know, this is an appetizer, really. You know that? What I give to you is an appetizer. And during the week, you should be getting the full meal, and somewhere along the way, you should be eating dessert. Right? But if you just eat on an appetizer throughout the week, you're going to get hungry. And something is going to fill that hunger that we're going to go after. You know, it'll either be God, God's Word, relationship with Jesus, or it's going to be something in the world. And we're going to go after that. And what happens is we end up shrinking as a Christian and not becoming stronger in our faith, and we, we get fed other things. And so we need this. And really, when you look at what I'm talking about, it's how Jesus has designed for us to make disciples and to grow in our relationship because that's how he did it. When you look and you read how Jesus taught his disciples, he did teach in the synagogue. We saw that. He went in the synagogue and he taught. So he went in the church, so to speak, and he taught and he preached. He did that. 
but he also preached sermons on the mountaintops. So he was outside the church, and he did the Sermon on the Mount, blessed the Beatitudes and all these things. And, and so he preached that to the mass group that was there. And, but he not only did preaching in the synagogue and a sermon on the mound and standing on a boat among a bunch of crowd of people and preaching to them, but he also got into small groups with them. And he gave, when he got in a small group with the disciples, he gave them an opportunity uh, to understand even more because he would tell the, the crowd something, but then they would ask him questions when they got along with him. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you know what I'm talking about. They would get along. What did you mean by that? And Jesus would start to expound on what he meant by that, and he started, they started to grow in understanding and knowledge of, what, of who the Word of God really is and what the Word of God meant when he said that. And so that's what small groups helps us to do is to get it. So when we see this, we see the example of what Jesus has shown us. And he also asked his questions of his, who do you say that I am? He asked his disciples that. Who do you say that I am? Others say, you're this, you're that, you're this. Who do you say that I am? And opened question and started digging deep within that person to start bringing out of them what really they believed. That's what discipleship is. That's what teaching is in a small group type setting of where we're asking questions and we're being able to ask questions to pull out of us perhaps an answer, to pull out of us sometimes the things we struggle with, to pull out of us sometimes the things that we need to grow in. And others who have experienced somebody stronger over here where I'm weaker, and they can share something, a testimony, or share the Word of God that they know to be true in their life and encourage me and build me up in my faith and maybe answer, and a lot of times do answer, the questions that I have, and that helps me to grow, and it helps you to grow. And that's why it's important. So Jesus did this. You, Jesus used the simple techniques of, of parables, little sto stories that he told. He used object lessons. He talked about if uh, the rocks will cry out. If, you don't, if they don't praise me, the rocks over here will cry out. He wrote on the sand. You know, he used object lessons. He did different things to teach because he had an audience that sometimes was kind of simple. And they need to understand and on their whatever the level is. And all of us learn in different ways. It doesn't mean that you're simple. I apologize for that. I'm not saying that anybody's simple. But sometimes we learn in different ways. Somebody is more visual. You look at that up there and you're like, wow, you know, wow, I can read that and I can learn more about it. It says teach them and it says down there the word of God and it's got scriptures up there. Now you may be able not to see that as well as I am up here, but I'm able to see this a little bit more maybe than you are and it's visual and it jumps out at to me. Some people like to be lectured. Some people like to be in discussion. Some people are readers. Some people like different things and they learn on their way of learning. And we've got, and Jesus was teaching on all aspects of how that we can learn. And that's how we have to learn to teach. We've got to know our audience. And we've got to know how that we need to teach to them and follow the examples of what Jesus did. He used also hyperboles. Hyperboles is where, well, you know, cut your hand off. <laughs> now that's pretty drastic. Pluck your eye out. You know, that was to get their attention. He didn't really mean to do that, but he was teaching a spiritual truth by something that was like an exaggerated thing to get your attention. So he used a hyperbole. And he taught in hyperboles. And he demonstrated, and he also taught through his actions. So he demonstrated what he wanted them to learn by the way that he did. He got down at the feet of them, and he washed the feet of Peter. No, don't wash my feet. I've got to wash my, your feet. Oh, or you'll have no part of me. Well, wash my head and everything. You know, wash me. But he was doing it by example that he showed them of a servant's heart. And he did that through teaching. That's what we've got to do. If we're going to be effective in teaching others and making disciples, we've got to do it the way that Jesus did it. He gave them work to do, and he got the reports afterwards. He sent them out by two. They came back rejoicing because uh, demons were subject to them. Healings took place and all these things. And he said, now, wait a second. He didn't say, now, wait a second. But he did say, rejoice because your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, you need to always remember it's not just the ministry and the success of ministry you need to remember your name's written in the Lamb's book of life 
And so he taught through the ways of being able to show and to teach in things that was uh, through giving them a work to do and then getting a report back from them. He traveled with them. He went around with them. So he had a relationship with them. He prayed with them. He broke bread with them. He rebuked them when they needed it. He wept with them. He corrected them, and he loved them. That's what Jesus did, and that's what we have to do if we are to teach others and make disciples. We have to do it the way that Jesus did it. And he's the ultimate teacher of, uh, of, of, of the one who is the main disciple maker. But unless we actively participate in Bible study, studying it for ourselves, being in church, hearing the pastor or a teacher, being in Bible study groups together, we'll be ignorant of Jesus and his teachings and we'll struggle in our faith. It's true. Is this happening? So the next question would be, are we following his examples in making disciples and teaching them the word of God? Is our time of being taught only on Sunday mornings by the pastor? Because there needs to be more. And I already said something to that effect already that this is an appetizer for you. Now, sometimes it's, it's a little milky. And sometimes it's some meat to chew on. Uh, if you go to a restaurant and you, you order an appetizer, sometimes you can get cheese, right? And sometimes you can get chicken wings. Or you can get something that's a meat to eat. And so an appetizer whets our appetite, and it should whet our appetite to the point that we want more. And I hope and pray that when I'm sharing with you the Word of God, that it whets our appetite that we would say, I want to know more about what the Lord is saying. I want to know more about this Jesus. I want to dig in. I want the full course meal. I want everything. I want to know more about him, and I want to get involved to know him better. So this needs to be the time of getting deeper into the Word of God with other believers. So I don't know. You know, we don't have really small groups that we have established uh, yet. Uh, we do have the one on Wednesday nights, and there are people that come to that. We've got the youth, and they do things. And, uh, and maybe you're having a small group meeting and doing some things, and, and praise the Lord. But if you're not connected in something, then you need to get connected in something. And, and you're missing out on an important part of discipleship. I, I remember when we lived in Charlottesville, Virginia, we, we did uh, uh, small groups, and we were involved in small group ministry and, and actually was uh, part of helping to get it set up. And so um, and it was a larger congregation. But I remember some of the most blessed times, I guess, that we had was with our small group. When we met on a, it was on a Wednesday night, we met together and we talked about the Scripture. We had fun together. We prayed together. We, we grew together, and, and we grew in Christ together. And so it was just a wonderful time to get together like that. And, uh, and, and we need to have that more. I, I, need, I mean, I just say that. We need to have that more because it's in this time that we grow and we're able to teach and to learn deeper things and become stronger as a disciple. In Acts chapter 2, when the church began, and uh, the Holy Spirit was given and there was outpouring of the Spirit, there were 3,000 souls that were saved and, and from all of the world. But when you read in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, what did they do? They continued and they moved forward. It says, And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and in that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. In verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So they studied the word of God and fellowship so they came together as, as believers in the breaking of bread they had communion with one another and in prayer and then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles so there were miraculous things that happened in this now all who believed were together and had all things in common so there was unity that was established in this and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need so they took care of one another and they really function as a church. So, so continuing daily with one, another, one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And this is what happened. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So it was like every day somebody was coming to know Jesus. Every day there was another opportunity to make a disciple. And it just continued to grow and continued to grow and continued to grow and continued to grow and continued to grow. If you go to uh, South 
uh, Korea, uh, I think it's the largest church in the world, is there. There's one in Indonesia also with uh, hundred, hundreds of thousands of people that are members of that church. But they do it through small groups of how that they network throughout that, that church. And a lot of churches that have grown have grown because they have gone to a small group ministries where they come together and people live their lives together in faith and they pray for one another and you get connected and you know Jesus had 12 disciples it was him and the 12 disciples sometimes there were some of the ladies there and they would be discipled as well but he did this in these small groups and I would encourage you all us all to get connected in a Bible study amen and when I say that it will take time out of your schedule to do it it will it will also take effort on your part and if you're willing to give up time of whatever else you're doing and you're willing to make the effort I can promise you if you do it with your heart you will receive great value out of doing that it will be something that will help you to grow in your faith and help you to to really become a stronger believer and, and to know the Word of God better, know Jesus better, know what He says better, and truly help us to become a better evangelist and a better teacher and a better someone who can reach people who are lost. It really will. I say that with all sincerity. It really will. I came across an article as I was preparing and studying regarding biblical illiteracy. And... Um, what that means is a lack of knowledge and understanding about the Bible. So there are people who just don't know what the Bible says. That I understand. You know, I understand that, uh, uh, you know, a new believer and they haven't read the Bible, they don't understand what it says. I can, uh, I can believe maybe somebody has been a Christian for a few months and they haven't read the Bible, but I can't really understand it for ones that's been saved for 20 years or whatever and don't read the Bible. That doesn't make sense to me. So there has to be that part of, you know, you've got to read the Bible. You've got to keep reading the Bible, and, and, and you've got to understand what it says. So I came across this and, uh, and some statistics in, the Amer in America about um, the American, from the American Bible Society that says 87% of households in Americans own, America owns a Bible. So we all raised our hands, right? The average household has three Bibles available. So that three Bibles. Just 11% have read the Bible through. So out of all the ones that, that raise your hands, statistically, 11% uh, of, of the people gathered here today have read the Bible all the way through. That's statistically. I don't know. what I don't know. 30% of Americans have read no more than several passages or stories. So they read maybe the Easter message. And that's a wonderful message to read, resurrection. And we need to read that. And maybe they read about David and the, John, the Goliath. And maybe they've seen that. Or maybe they read something about uh, uh, some other story in the Bible. And that's, and that's the extent of their Bible knowledge. And, that, and that's all they, they have. Um, so 30% of, of Americans have read no more than several passages or stories. Only about 36% describe the Bible as true. Now that's concerning. But only 36% of America considers the Bible to be true. The enemy is a thief, and he's a liar. And he is out to deceive people, to make them believe a lie and be damned, and, and, and to question the authority of God's word. That's exactly what he did in the garden. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. Did God really say that? And so that still tactic that he uses is still at work in the world today to make people really believe whether or not the Bible really is true and that it is uh, uh, needful. 56% consider it a source of good morals. And there's a quote from this article that I read that says, there seems to be a high level of respect for the scriptures without a belief the contents are applicable to daily life or even true. 64% of Americans say God accepts the worship of all religions, including Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. 64% of Americans say God accepts the worship of all religions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. 52% of Americans believe that Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God. 
56% of Americans agree with this statement, the Holy Spirit is a force, but is not a personal being. And let me tell you something. If you believe what I just said, those are all false. Because the Holy Spirit is not a force. He's a part of the Trinity. He's God. And Jesus was not created. He's God. He was the creator, along with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. And God accepts the worship of his people is whom he worshiped. But there are many, and over, over, you know, a majority of people, over 50% believe that. And how many in the church, perhaps, are on that statistic to believe those same things? Because they're all false ideas, and the source of that is Influence Magazine. So we're living in a time where there is a lack of knowledge of the Bible, and it even shows up in churches. Some today in churches are teaching and preaching false doctrine and people don't know that it's false they don't know that it's false because of their illiteracy they don't understand what that pastor preached or that teacher taught upon they just accept it because they're not reading it themselves and they become illiterate they're illiterate they don't know what the Bible's teaching and you can't become a disciple of Jesus if you don't know what Jesus says and if somebody tells you something that he didn't say and you believe it, you've been deceived. And that's going on in the world today, in the church world. Some teach and preach part of the Bible to make people feel good instead of all the commandments, and people don't know any different. They have their ears tickled. They want to hear. They heap up themselves. Teachers having itching ears. They want to hear. And there are teachers out there that will tell them exactly what they want to hear. But they won't tell them the whole truth. Jesus said, teach them all the things that I've said. To observe all the commandments. All the commandments. Some continue to do sinful things and think they're okay for lack of knowledge and understanding the word of God. There are people that come in church and they're still living in sin and they're still living sinful things. They've asked Jesus to forgive them, but they don't understand that the scriptures tell them, tell us that this is sin. And because they don't want to know any more about it, they don't read the Bible and they don't become aware that it is sin and live bliss in ignorance. But ignorance is no excuse when we stand before God when every one of us has a Bible. Every one of us have a Bible. Everybody said they had a Bible, didn't you? So we can never stand before God and say, well, I didn't, have any, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't understand. I didn't have a reason. You've got a church that you're a part of. There's teaching that goes on. There are Bible studies that you can get in connected with. And you've got a Bible to read. And the Holy Spirit is still with us and working in us. No excuses. Every one of us should be mature disciples. More and more and more and more. And every one of us should be bringing people into the church every week because we're reaching out and we're reaching to people. Every week. Every week. Every day what happened in Acts every day people were added to the church the Lord was saving people every single day some barely teach in their church or preach and think and it's become more of a social gathering than they are a church and are missing a relationship with Jesus and they're missing the mission no wonder there's biblical literacy in America. If biblical literacy should be coming from church and from believers, somebody's not doing our jobs. Somebody's missing the mission. So it's sad to read these statistics. It's sad to read those statistics, but it also ought to be encouraging because there's an opportunity for the church to shine. There is truly an opportunity for the church to do what the Lord called us to do. Here, there's a harvest field of people that don't know what the Word of God is. There's a harvest field out here of people that are miserable and their life is a mess and they're all involved with all kinds of things and they don't know the solution for it. And here's a church person over here that does know, a Christian person, a relationship with Jesus that know, does know and they're telling them about it. That's an opportunity for the church. That's an opportunity for us to let the light shine. It's an opportunity for a mission that's critical. It's an opportunity for us to help people come to understand more about the Bible through teaching those that we have relationships with and to make disciples out of them. 
I see and I hear and I think it's wonderful that the president is wanting to put Bibles back in the schools. That's wonderful. But let me tell you something, that's not the solution. Why is that not the solution? Because some people I wouldn't trust to teach my child the Bible. Let me tell you where the Bible needs to be reopened. In our homes. Amen. In the church. Amen. And then let the kids go and take their Bible and they go and tell everybody else. Maybe they'll win teacher over here that's, that's telling them, you know, you evolved from a, a monkey and all these kinds of things. Let them go and be the ambassador in the schoolhouses. I think it's a wonderful intention. But the greater intention and the greater thing that needs to happen is the church needs to open up those Bibles that we all said we have in our homes and teach our kids again. And the Bible needs to be opened up in the house of God. And we need to read it. And we need to open it up in our homes in small groups. And we need to be talking about the Word of God and what the Word of God says for us. Y'all remember the word go? You know what he says first? Go, therefore, of the Great Commission. Remember he says, therefore, and that was because of the authority of Jesus who saved us and redeemed us we need some people to go therefore we need some people to go therefore some mature believers that need to see the need and realize that this is a mission that is critical and it must happen in 2019 not 2020 don't wait for 2020 it needs to happen in 2019 it needs to happen September the 15th 2019, 26, uh, 19, uh, September 16th, 2019, if the Lord allows there to be one, and so on. Go, therefore, mature believers, and do something about what needs to be done, what the dilemma is in our nation today, what the dilemma is in our world where there's biblical illiteracy. Listen, there are people that... Uh, uh, you hear me, t I've told you about the, the churches over there in India. There are pastors there that are reaching out to the Hindus who have no Bibles. They're hungry and they are desiring the Word of God. They have no Bible. Let me tell you, they have no Bible. They don't have that one sitting on our dusty bookshelf. They have no Bible and they want a Bible. My Lord, help us. My Lord, help me to see the need for me to open up the Word of God more in my life. Not only for me, but for my family. Not only for me and my family, but for the house of God. Not only for me and my family and the house of God, but me and my family and the house of God and outside the house of God. Go, therefore, he's telling us. Go, therefore. Help us, Lord people that fall within those statistics and we need to start doing some things to address that we need to start more Bible study groups in our church well I, don't, I can't come on Wednesday night well when can you come when can you meet start a group then well I'm off on Tuesday mornings there's a Bible there's a prayer meeting here and I, you know what I'll tell you these prayer warriors will open up the Bible with you if you want and they'll start talking about the Word of God with you. Well, I can't come, but on Sunday night, because I work Sunday mornings and I've got to do... Well, guess what? There are keys to this building. If you want to come in here, there are also keys to your house. There are keys to my house, too. And there are keys to other people's houses who would say, Come, come to my house. We'll have a Bible study together. Amen? Amen? Anybody out there would say, Hey... I'll have a Bible study with you. Raise your hand. Let some people see that I'll have a Bible study. Raise them high. Raise them high because some people may not see you. Now look around. There are people here who will say, I'll have a Bible study with you. I'll, I'll open up my home. I'll meet at church. I'll meet you at the restaurant. I'll go wherever you want me to go. But we'll get together and study the Word of God together. Oh, that's encouraging. Raise those hands. That encourages me today, church, when I see all these hands raised up that says, I'll do this. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because what that's telling me is there's some other people that see that the mission is critical and there's opportunities for this to happen. Opportunities. Opportunities. Isn't that wonderful? I work with a guy 
that at the bank and he tell sometimes we're looking at challenges and we're looking at some things that's a difficult thing but he always says it's an opportunity and I'm like you're right it is it's an opportunity it's an opportunity thank God for opportunities because opportunities are things that we can do something with and we can do something to make them better opportunities are challenges we face and we kind of get intimidated with those but opportunities looks to see what maybe God can do in this instead of what I'm trying to do amen so we need some people that will rise up and I saw hands and if you want to do one come to me after church talk to me and and we'll we'll, we'll try to get some things together but it we need some people to volunteer uh, and, and maybe it's a Sunday morning before church starts we got a wonderful beautiful building here we got places where you can sit in a room and you can have a Bible study together and Sunday school if you want to call it Sunday school so be it if you want to call it Monday school call it Monday whatever you want to do I don't care but let's study the Word of God together let's go make some disciples let's fulfill the Great Commission that says teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded teaching them there's some teachers in this crowd good teachers and they will share the Word of God and I'm thankful for you so some may not be a teacher that's okay but you're willing to be taught you, you know one thing sometimes we've got to be willing to be taught sometimes we can act like we know it all oh, I already know all that I already read the Bible I already know it all really let me ask you this question <laughs> let me go to Malachi chapter 15 there's no Malachi 15 I don't leave I see somebody would go running over there I can't even find it it's an Old Testament over here it's the last book of Bible isn't it in Old Testament right before Matthew Malachi ends in chapter 4 now I could ask you a question what's in Malachi 15 verse number 3 and you could say well it says this oh really well really no there's no Matthew Malachi 15 and then if we're like yes there is there is a Malachi 15 there is there is there is you know what that is that is a rebellious spirit we need to have a teachable spirit about us and we need to be able to say Lord I'm a I want to be a sponge just feed me feed me feed me give me all that I need I need to learn more in my life have a teachable spirit and understand and know and and, and, and if you need a teacher then admit it that you need a teacher it's okay I need a teacher we all need a teacher we all need someone to teach us don't we amen stand with me I'm done I'm done there's opportunities for us opportunities opportunities for us to teach someone here in the church who can bring somebody with them that's not a Christian they can come and sit in the group they can come and listen and hear about Jesus they may get saved in that small group meeting somebody may get filled with the Holy Spirit somebody may get healed in, the, in, in that meeting somebody gets encouraged in that meeting somebody and then and then everybody becomes more excited to come into the house of God it's kind of like a funeral at first this morning No, that's no reflection on the praise and worship team. They were, they were ready. They were singing. They were. Uh, kind of like bless me if you can. What if we came in already blessing the Lord? What if we came in bringing our groups with us? What if we came in bringing the lost with us, and we came in with an exuberance and glory and praise on our lips as we run run through the door? 
I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come, oh, oh, we met this week. We've been out there. We did this work, and we went and ministered. We went to the nursing home, and we talked to them, and we prayed with them, and we encouraged them, and, and we, we read this over here in the Bible. And do you know Sister Sally over here? She got filled with the Spirit the other night while we were there at our house. <laughs> Now, wait a second. That doesn't happen, you may say. Yes, it does. It happened in the book of Acts. It still happens today. God's got a way of doing things. And his way is always better than our ways. Sometimes we go through the motions and we get through a routine and, and we find it just isn't working quite right. Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go back to the Word of God and let him teach us. Let him teach us how we're supposed to do things and follow that. And I'll tell you what, if we do that, the Lord will do some things that we've not even seen before. Let him teach us. Heavenly Father, oh, we thank you, Lord, that you have sent us a teacher, the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the Word of God. Lord, that is true from beginning to the end. Every single word of it, I believe every single word of it is true and it teaches us and it shows us and it demonstrates to us and it gives examples of how that we're supposed to live and how that we can be saved and how that we can live just like you Jesus and Holy Spirit you guide us and direct us and you bring to remembrance those things that we need to have remembrance in our minds sometimes from the word of God to help us in a specific moment to help us in a specific time and an opportunity that we have to witness for you or an opportunity that we have when the devil's coming by that we can show your glory through us and we can triumph over that devil. An opportunity. Thank you for opportunities. Thank you for open doors. Lord, let us open the doors of our homes for more Bible study. Let us open the church doors more than Sunday morning and Wednesday nights for Bible studies, Tuesday mornings. Let us open the doors more to be able to teach and to make disciples and to fulfill what you're telling us to do. Help us to see the mission as critical. God, we love you. Bless every person. Bless every heart, Lord. Every heart. Let us all be teachable. Let us all grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us grow. Let us grow spiritually. And Lord, I believe as we grow spiritually, We'll grow numerically, but we got to grow from the inside out. Help us to grow inside, and the outside will happen. I believe that, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We need your help. Thank you, God, for pastors. Thank you for teachers. Thank you for people that you've placed in the church to equip us. Thank you, Lord. Now let us dig deeper into your word. Let us get deeper deeper meaning, deeper understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Call forth people who will say, here am I, Lord, send me. Call forth people who will volunteer in the gifts and callings that they've been called to. Call forth people, Lord, just like you did the disciples. Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Will you just take this time just to yield yourself to God where you're standing? Lord, I yield myself to you. Maybe, maybe you need to ask for forgiveness. I do. Lord, forgive me for not reading the Bible like I should. Forgive me for not being the pastor that I should be. Forgive me, Lord. For the many times I've failed you and failed others, forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry. Help me, God. Help us, Lord, each of us. Help us, Lord. Help us to have structure to what we're doing. Help us to have organization to what we're doing. God, use every gift and every talent within this congregation for us to fulfill the commission. Help us, Lord. Call us forth, Lord. Call everybody right now by your voice. Speak to us to fulfill our part. 
Thank you, Jesus. Sing that song, brother, as we continue to just pray and stand here. So we'll sing this song. Then we're going to be dismissed. speak word of God Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the word. Let it now just stir our hearts. Help us now to move forward. Let us go, therefore. Let us make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that you've commanded. And lo, you are with us always, even to the end of the age. Thank you, Lord, for your promises. We look forward to next Sunday, God, as, you, as we do worship with our young people as they lead us in worship as we come together as a church once again and Wednesday night as we come as a Bible study group and prayer meeting on Tuesday mornings and the different things and ladies coming and fellowshipping this week and time of working together and also just enjoying each other's presence and company bless everything God that's being done let us continue to grow in you Lord in Jesus name God bless you all Love you. Have a blessed day.